Socialism is the main enemy of American corporations uh, uh, here and, and overseas, and they, they need a government in place which is going to be sympathetic to free enterprise in its full glory. And so we, we have attempted to assassinate more than 50 foreign leaders since the end of the Second World War. That's five, more than 50 leaders. We have attempted to overthrow more than 50 countries in the same time period. We have attempted to, we, have, we actually bombed more than 30 countries since 1945 and so on. I've compiled it all. It's, it, I was amazed myself how much there was. When I began, I had no idea there was this much to uncover. But we have to keep doing this to keep from power any government which is not going to be sympathetic to the aims of, of, of the multinational corporations. And that's why we hate a Cuban, the Cubans so much. The Cubans have never apologized for throwing out capitalism. And they, they, uh, they have infected the entire Latin America with, with their philosophy. That can't be excused. That's why Cuba is a perpetual enemy and, and, and an object of hatred. And it will be the way forever. Yeah, and CIA officials have even endorsed your book saying that, you know, I've never seen a more accurate kind of historical record of, of all these interventions. Um, let's talk about Obama. When you see the policies that he's not only continued from the Bush administration, but exacerbated, I mean, assassinations, the drones, um, pretty much this endless war, were, were you surprised that, that someone touting himself as a progressive has, has continued this, or is this just kind of par for the course now in the empire? I was not surprised because he gave us all the warning that we needed. During the campaign in 2008, he said on many, many occasions he was going to deal very harshly with Iran and with Cuba and with Afghanistan. He made it very plain. It's only people who had stars in their eyes who thought he was the savior. Who These people did not hear or pay attention to what he was saying. But if you paid attention, you, it was obvious that he was saying, it's all going to continue, folks. Don't expect anything different. Yeah. And he, he didn't, he didn't uh, go back on that promise. Yeah. In fact, it's just gotten worse. Uh, I recently spoke to Jimmy Carter uh, about the surveillance state, um, and he said that the ramping up of these counterterrorism policies was kind of an overcorrection of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Do you agree with this premise, or do you think there's something else at, uh, playing at ha a hand here in kind of the ramping up of the surveillance and, and the policies that we see being enacted? Well, if, if our policies at home and abroad were sharply different, after 9-11, as opposed to before 9-11, I would agree with him. But it, it's really this, it's been the same before and after, only more of the same. 9-11 was used by the powers that be here to ramp up these policies. And, and they have to a, a fantastic extent. But the policies were always there. We were intervening in other nations for, for, uh, and, and tapping phones here and spying on our own people for decades be before 9-11. So, that hasn't really changed except in, in, in the degree. Mm -hmm. It's much more now than it was before because they have the excuse of 9-11. That's, that's what they wanted. Yeah, exactly. They legitimized that, that whole ramping up. So, you know, when people hear about the CIA, they think of this, this kind of this faceless entity, has a black budget. Uh, everyone kind of acknowledges its, its existence, but no one really knows how much damage it's really doing around the world, as you so uh, thoroughly outline. How do we hold these officials accountable? I mean, are they just completely beyond the rule of law, these assassinations taking place? How do we end this endless warfare? Well, I don't know. <laughs> make, make me president or make you president. Uh, it's not going to change with a Republican or a Democrat. Right. I'm sorry to say that. Pe people ask you, well, what can we do? And my answer is not very great, but what my answer usually is, educate yourself and as many others as you can about what the, this government has actually done at home and abroad. And with this education, we'll keep adding to our numbers. And at some point, at least in theory, our numbers will reach a critical mass, and how, how the explosion will take place, 
I don't know, but there will be an explosion. Indeed, truth is power. It's a powerful thing, and it, we all should uh, be learning these things. It really does explain a lot. Thank you so much, William Bloom, for coming on. Thank you. Author of America's Deadliest Export, Democracy, The Truth About U.S. Foreign Policy, Everything Else. Check it out coming out next year. Thanks so much. Thank you.